Father, bless us now as we minister the word of God to you. Today, with power and authority, destroy every yoke and cause your face to ever shine upon us. In Jesus' name, amen. amen. That I may be comforted, that I may be consoled together, that we may console each other by the mutual faith, both of you and me. The mutual faith. I've said this for years, that salvation or our relationship with one another in church is a two-way street. Even when people come to join the church, people join the church because they see that there is something in that ministry, hopefully, that can help them. They join because they want to be fed. They join, hopefully you join because you love the word, first and foremost. We want you to enjoy the music. We want you to enjoy the singing, the testimonies. But the word of God ought to be the major deciding factor when it comes to whether or not you join a ministry. People consider things that perhaps shouldn't be. Well, is this a denominational church or a non-denominational church? Is this a Baptist church or a Methodist church or a Church of God in Christ, Assemblies of God, and different things? And these are all worthwhile considerations depending upon uh, why they are being pondered. But the main thing that should come into play uh, first and foremost is, is the word of God being preached? Bless you, my friend. What role does Jesus Christ play in this church? Who is Jesus? What does the preacher say about Jesus? What role does the Bible hold in that church? Amen. Not where do they stand politically. Our church tends to swim upstream politically because you have a pastor who doesn't support any politician until and unless that politician's positions agree with mine. So any politician that you hear I support, the truth is they support me. Because I believe what I believe. And I'm not willing to change my beliefs. Whether the politician is black, white, Democrat, Republican, independent, and I get my beliefs from the word of God. And I'm not going to take a position with anybody at the expense of the scriptures and my Christianity. Not going to do that. The question is, what does the Bible say about this issue? And what is your position? Praise the Lord. Uh, Mr. or Mrs. Politician, poly, a politician, when running for office, because I believe that the Bible speaks to everything. It's a two way street when people come to join the church. I believe they join, as I was saying, because they see some way that the church will benefit them. But it is also necessary for the preacher or the pastor or that church to understand that everyone who comes to visit, to join, to be a part, they join us because they see how we can help them. But we also need to know that they can help us. Amen. 
The Bible says this, according to the Bible says in 1 Corinthians chapter 12 and verse 11, it says that the Spirit divides to every believer severally, speaking of spiritual gifts, severally as he will. The word severally means individually. It means separately. God the Holy Spirit deposits a gift, at least one, in each believer privately, separately, as he, the Holy Ghost, desires to. Now, he doesn't have to give you one. He can deposit more than one. But everybody who's saved has something from the Lord that they can offer to the work of God, whether they offer it or not. It is designed to be a two-way street. We need each other. This word mutual in our text comes from a com compound, a combination of two Greek words. The first word is the word in. E-N, pronounced in, which literally means on, at, or by. In, on, at, or by. The other word is uh, alelan, alelan, A-L-L-E-I-O-N, alelan, which means one another. So if you combine in and alelan, it is on, at, or by both parties. It is something that is in that one another, both have. See, Christ in you and Christ in me. God Almighty, we can help each other. We're supposed to help each other. There's an unhealthy spirit of skepticism that has invaded the body of Christ. Many of us aren't for one another. We spend too much time plotting against one another. So sometimes, instead of mutual uh, comfort, there is mutual destruction. But I'm here to say that this thing is to be a two-way street. We need each other. You need that person who is sitting next to you, whether you know it or not. You need them spiritually. You need their prayers. You may never know when you may need that person to give you a word of encouragement. See, you never know from whom a word fitly spoken may come from. Some of the most encouraging words that I've received in, uh, during my ministerial career did not come from people who have a title. It didn't come from someone who holds a lofty position. Sometimes God will use, praise the Lord, uh, the person whom we expect the least to give us the very word we need at the time to keep us going. Can I get a witness? In verse 8 of Romans chapter 1, Paul acknowledged their faith. In fact, verse 8 tells us that their faith in Christ was the stuff of legend. That their faith was well known and well spoken of throughout, the text says, the world says in verse 8, first, I thank God through Jesus Christ for you all. For your faith is spoken of throughout the whole world. Uh, their faith was public. Let me, allow me to digress and say this to you. I just want you to know this. There's no such thing as secret discipleship no such thing 
Either the discipleship will destroy the secrecy or the secrecy will destroy the discipleship. They cannot coexist. Praise the Lord. You can't be a Christian and nobody know it uh, uh, for a long time. If, you, if you're able to keep this to yourself, you will lose it and not know it's gone. So can't be a secret disciple. God has no secret service. Praise the Lord. Let every, uh, let the, the Bible says, let the redeemed of the Lord say so. According to verse 8, their faith, that is their credence, their conviction, their adherence to the truth of the gospel, praise the Lord, their acknowledgement uh, of Jesus as Lord. The Bible teaches that it was spoken of, that it was talked about, it was plainly declared throughout the world. The recipients of the letter understood that Paul was speaking of the Roman world. At the time of this writing, Paul was in Corinth, in jail, writing to the saints at Rome, but he was speaking to them and, and telling them uh, that throughout the Roman Empire, which at this time, at the time of the writing, the Roman, Roman Empire was wealthy, it was literary, uh, it, was, uh, it was very powerful, it was uh, artistic, uh, money, power, fame, and it was quite large. The Roman Empire, praise the Lord, it spread from, uh, it covered most of all of Europe and northern Africa, uh, even the Near East. It was a huge uh, uh, geographical area and it was filled with polytheism. And for all of its wealth and artistry and all of its literary genius, it was a place of decadence. It was a place of decay. It was an immoral city. Homosexuality was among, was so common in Rome that Edward Gibeon, uh, he wrote this uh, in the history of the decline and fall of the Roman Empire. He wrote that of of the first 15 emperors, Claudius was the only one whose taste in love was entirely correct. Only Claudius Caesar was not a homosexual. Many of the most prominent men in Rome, in Roman society, were bisexual, if not homosexual. Julius Caesar was called by his contemporaries every woman's man and every man's woman. He was a wicked homosexual. Catullus, Tibullus, Virgil, and Horace all wrote homophile poetry. The Roman emperor Trojan was so wicked and his love for boys was so great. Uh, uh, and, and then uh, Hadrian uh, uh, put up sculptures of his male lovers. And Commodius kept a little boy naked except for jewelry and slept with him all the time. In this wicked, rich, Literary, given to the arts, artistic, huge, powerful empire was a powerful church. A church, praise the Lord, that became the topic of conversation. Constant streams of people from the eternal city circulated stories about the remarkable saints mentioned in verse 7 of this church at Rome. The word was widespread. The church had literally become a talking point for what God could do 
in a church for the people uh, if they just believed God. So Paul knew of their faith. It was a powerful church. Now, it was not a church without its problems. It was not a church without its shortcomings because the born-again uh, Gentiles in the Roman church uh, had fallen out with the born-again Jews in the Roman church. And if you read uh, Romans chapter 11, you see one of the reasons why Paul wrote uh, the letter because the Jews felt that they should get more respect from the Gentiles because uh, salvation started with the Jews. The Gentiles didn't want to give them much respect because they had the ball and they dropped it. And so Paul had the right to settle their differences. It wasn't a perfect church, but it was an awesome church. And I want to say this uh, to those preachers who will see this message. Be careful how, that you, know, you do not spend an inordinate amount of your time preaching against other churches. Whereas it is true that we have to correct false doctrine and we have to stand and challenge error when we see it. The truth is there is no such thing as a perfect church. The only church where there are no rude or bad or mean or funny acting folk at times is an empty church. But the moment people join the church, praise the Lord, when people come, people uh, are people. Humans are flawed. And, and, and sometimes, sometimes the people are guilty of behaving just the way you said they behave. And then sometimes we are guilty of misinterpreting behavior. Either way, people are people. You don't like my preaching today. The church at Rome had its problems, but the church was on its mission. Can I get a witness? Truth is, Regardless, uh, we need each other. And, and Paul, Paul here, he gave his credentials. Romans chapter 1, uh, beginning with the first verse, Paul says, Paul talks about his faith, a servant of Jesus Christ, called to be an apostle, separated unto the gospel of God, which he had promised before by his prophets, in the Holy Scriptures. The Holy Scriptures he's referencing here are the Old Testament. By the time, by the time Paul wrote this letter, uh, there was no Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John. And, and, if, and if the Gospels existed, they were not in widespread circulation. So when he speaks of the Scriptures, he's talking about uh, Moses and uh, the prophets. The Old Testament prophesied about Jesus Christ concerning uh, his son, Jesus Christ, our Lord, uh, which was made of the seed of David according to the flesh. According to the flesh, he was Jewish. According to the flesh, uh, he was of David's family. Are you with me? According to uh, the flesh and declared to be the son of God with power according to the spirit of holiness on his mother's side. He was of the descendants of David, but uh, with Joseph being Mary's husband, but on his father's side, he was God's holy son. Jesus Christ being the only God man to walk the earth, 100% God and 100% man according to the spirit of holiness, by the resurrection from the dead, by whom we have received grace and apostleship for obedience to the faith among all nations for his name. Notice, Paul didn't go to nations where the patron religion was not Christianity and take on that religion. Paul went to nations where the patron religion was not Christianity and he preached Christ. Paul wouldn't have gone 
to a Muslim country and then become a Muslim. Paul wouldn't have gone to a Buddhist uh, country and then preach, preach Buddhism. No, he was the apostle of Jesus Christ. And wherever he went, he preached Jesus. And then told the saints in verse 6 says, Among whom are ye also the called of Christ? That is, and you also are among those uh, that are called to follow or to belong to Jesus Christ. So he tells, he mentions their legendary faith. He talks about his faith. And uh, the point of the text is, if you got some saints who believe, and some other saints who believe, and then you bring those saints together, some powerful things ought to happen when saints who believe come together. Can I get a witness? I'm going to tell you, as I've said before, I prophesy again, as we near the coming of our Lord, we're going to need each other more and more. The book of Malachi deals with this. Malachi chapter 3, praise the Lord, gives us powerful information about our, the way we as saints ought to do. And those of you who say, well, I don't get along good with saints, I get along better with sinners, I say to you, check your spirit. That ought not to be. Praise the Lord, because you're, you're operating from two totally different vantage points. One represents Christ and the other represents the devil. Now, now, now what do y'all agree on? How much, how much fellowship can you have? How much agreement can there be? What agreement have the temple of God with idols? What agreement have light with darkness and darkness with light? Paul said, come ye out from among them and be ye separate, saith the Lord. Yes, in Malachi 3 and 16 it says, Then they that feared the Lord spake often one to another. And look at what happened. And the Lord hearkened and heard it. And a book of remembrance was written before him for them that feared the Lord. And that, uh, look at this, a thought upon his name. Notice this. This is one group. Now, this is very important that you get this, and I'm almost where I'm headed. In verse 14, we learn about another group who heard the same preaching that the group in verse 16 heard. But the, this group, the, I call it the first group, uh, they were skeptical, worldly, nominal, quote, believers, end of quote. See, when they heard the word, their response was, in verse 14, the A clause, it is vain to serve God. And what profit is it that we have kept his ordinances and that we have walked mournfully before the Lord of hosts? These people said that it is useless. It is unsubstantial. It is unreal. It is valueless. Uh, it is materially and spiritually worthless to serve the Lord. That's the response they gave when they heard the word of the Lord from the prophet Malachi. Praise the Lord. And, and the context here was that of paying time, giving offerings, and working in the church. When group A heard it, they said, why should we pay our time? Why should we give our offering? See, by the time Malachi was written, the golden age of when they returned from Babylonian captivity had passed. And the economy had slowed down. And the folk were struggling spiritually. And the saints grew skeptical. And when Malachi said, God spoke to him and said, you have robbed me. Even this whole nation. And they asked, wherein have we robbed thee? Malachi said, through tithe and offering. Their response was, what profit is there in paying tithe? Well, they, oh, there's no value in giving offerings. There, there's no value in working in the church. But thank God, verse 16 speaks of another group who heard the same message at the same time. And guess what they did? They began to talk to one another. And they began to encourage one another. It says, they that 
feared the Lord. Uh, the fear of the Lord here is a virtual synonym for living holy and living righteously and being committed to the Lord. In other words, those who love God, those who were committed to obey the Lord, the Bible says they speak often one to another. See, you got to find someone who is like-minded, who loves Jesus just like you do. I witness to people who are on the fence. I pray for people who are struggling. Praise the Lord. I try to encourage that brother who don't know whether they want to serve the Lord or not, but I don't hang with them. See, I can't, I can't carry that all the time. I need sometimes to meet another soldier. I love running into someone else who's not ashamed to own his name. I like, I like talking to folk who believe like I believe. Are you with me? Isn't it refreshing sometimes to just be able to find someone else who still believes that holiness is right? who still believe in being saved, sanctified, and filled with the Holy Ghost. Praise the Lord. I've been places. I've been on debate stages. I've been places. I've been in the enemy territory and looked around and, and couldn't hardly find anybody who believed like I believe. And so I'm setting my mind and setting my heart to do battle alone, only to find another soul. Praise the Lord. And sometimes the soldier, we, we have ways of letting each other know we're on board. We both love Jesus Christ. Praise the Lord. And, and sometimes in your, in your family, when you go home for Thanksgiving, go home for Christmas, visit loved ones, you can't hardly find anybody who believe like you believe. And then you heard that, that auntie or, or your niece or your nephew got saved. And when, you, and when you sit down and you talk with them and you find out that they got it, like the Bible said, something leaps on the inside. Because now you got somebody that you can talk to. Now you got someone you can turn to if you're discouraged. And they know how to encourage you and keep us reminded. We remind each other of the things that really matter. We remind each other of our Christian values. We remind each other of the things that Jesus said. Hey! Isn't it good to find somebody else? I wish I had a praying church who believes like you believe. Especially in this day and time. Especially in this day and time where our faith and our doctrine is under attack. We got to know how to encourage each other. Especially the internet has given voice to fools. Has given voice to to silly people. You have to wonder whether or not folk are drunken to say some of the things that people are saying now. It's nothing now for preachers to stand up and declare that there is no hell. And you know how we are. If it's on the internet or if it's in the news or if it's written somewhere, it must be true. The arrogance of men who believe that they can go up against uh, established church orthodoxy. And all of a sudden, here you are. You've just been here maybe 30 or 40 years, maybe 50 years, and you've discovered something that Paul didn't know. You've discovered something that the apostles didn't know. And you are calling Jesus a liar because Jesus spoke of a literal hell. Jesus spoke of a place where the worms dieth not and where the fire is not quenched. Jesus tried to find a, a place in the community that he could liken to hell. Jesus looked around and looked around. Finally, he looked over there and he saw the city dump. In, in, in Palestinian times, they didn't have the sophisticated sewer systems that we have today. And what they had was, was a place where they dig a huge hole. And all of the refuse and all of the garbage and, and all of the human excrement and everything would be dumped in that place. The place was called Gehenna, translated in the King James as hell. And the way they kept it burned, they kept the trash down, is that they would constantly keep the place 
on fire. They would set fire to, to burn up the trash. Can you imagine the smoke and the stench that came from that place? all the time and because of what was deposited there it was a factory for worms and maggots and filthy crawling things and Jesus said that place is what hell is like hell and hell the fire is not quenched just like Gehenna, the maggots, the worms die if not because there are so many maggots there. Yes, and, uh, and it is a place, according to the word of our Lord, that is prepared for the devil and his angels. But Jesus said that he was going to say to people who wouldn't serve him, depart from me, you workers of iniquity, into the lake of fire, prepared for the devil and his angels how dare some puny man how dare some weak preacher how dare some human being who's got to die how dare you defy the word of god how dare you stand up and defy the faith we need each other we need to remind each other that the bible is right and somebody's wrong. Somebody shout something in here. Just look at that person who's next to you like you need them. Just look at them like you need them. Just look at them like you need them. Because the truth is you do. I know that well I'm strong I don't need anybody Paul said no man lives to himself and no man dies to himself none of us are strong enough to make it on our own every one of us need a word of encouragement from time to time every one of us need to have somebody else praying for us everybody needs an amen corner hey! everybody needs somebody good God almighty lift your hands someone and begin to praise the Lord in here Thank you, Jesus. The saints at Malachi, uh, praise the Lord, they kept each other encouraged. They reminded each other what was right. In this day and time, we got upper room, you know we got to talk to each other. Because the world is trying to get us to go along with stuff. Buy in the stuff. Cave. Go along with uh, things because of the color of the skin of the person who's promoting it. Go along with stuff because a particular uh, 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 political party says it's right. Go along with stuff because if you don't do it, you won't be considered black. I want to tell the world you can say what you want to. You can stand with who you want to stand. But I made up my mind a long time ago that I was going to believe the report of the Lord. Ah! I wonder today whose report will you believe? Do I have anybody here who will say, I will believe the report of the Lord? Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. The world will try to ostracize you, criticize you, shame you, shout you down, embarrass you. Good God Almighty. That's why it's so important to come to church. When we come, we get reminded that on a hill far away stood an old rugged cross. When we come, we get reminded that Jesus is coming back. When we come, we get reminded that holiness is right. And when we come, we get to do our Hebrews 10. And 24, it says, let us consider one another to provoke one another to love and to good works. It's my job to help you stay saved. It's your job to help me stay saved. It's your job to help your neighbor stay saved. It's your neighbor's job to help you stay saved. We need one another yeah 
somebody praise the Lord. Praise him. Woo. My, 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 my. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. We need each other. Hallelujah. With the doctrine under attack. The world is trying to get us. I'm closing here to doubt Jesus, to doubt the Bible, doubt the Bible on important issues, doubt the Bible on the issues of origin. The world told us is telling us that we came from monkeys, that we came from apes, that we were some amoeba in the water, crawled up on the dry land. The devil is a liar. The Bible says God made man in his own image. The world wants us to believe that some gases from somewhere exploded and then we had a universe. No, sir. The Bible said in the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. I didn't come from an ape. I didn't come from a monkey. I didn't come from an amoeba. The Lord strong and mighty the Lord mighty in battle made us and we ought to give him glory look at this universe look at the world in which we live yeah yeah Lord. Woo! somebody ought to leap up and down and shout Jesus made me Jesus made me Not only did he make you, brothers, let me hear you say yes. Sisters, let me hear you say yes. Not only did he make you, but he didn't get it wrong. He wasn't confused. He never put a woman's spirit in a man's body. And he never put a man's spirit in a woman's body. You ought to celebrate the way you were made. You ought to thank God for being made a man. Ladies, you ought to thank God for making you a woman. Yeah! Yeah, Lord. Yeah, Lord. If somebody thank him in here. Somebody praise him because he's good. Mm -hmm. Woo! Ah, uh, I, I really... I really think that this is an appropriate place for me to ask you. I'm trying not to do it, but I think right here is an appropriate place for me to ask you to tell your neighbor, I believe God. Neighbor, I believe God. I believe the Bible. I believe Jesus. You believe? Wave your hands. Shout, I believe. Ah! Go on and encourage each other. Encourage one another.
yes. Tell him yes. Tell him yes. Mm. It is a mutual faith. In Titus 1 and verse 4, it's called the common faith. In 2 Peter 1 and verse 1, it's called like precious faith. In 2 Chronicles, 2 Corinthians 4 and 13, it's called the same spirit of faith. And then in Ephesians 4 and 5, it's called one Lord, one faith, one baptism, one God and Father of all, who is above all, through all, and in you all. If you're saved, there's just one faith. And Paul said, I can't wait to get to Rome because I have a spiritual gift that I want to impart. But lest you think it's just a one-way street, he said, let me explain. There is something in you that I need, and there's something in me that you need. Tell your neighbor, there's something in you that I need, and there's something in me that you need. We can help each other run this race. We can help each other get to the other side. You don't know what your neighbor is facing. You don't know what they're going through. Every chance you get to encourage somebody, take it. Every chance you get to give someone a smile, you ought to do it. Every chance you get to say to your brother and sister, in the Lord, hang on in there. You ought to do it. Let us comfort one another. Paul said, I want to comfort you, but that ain't all. He said, I am a debtor. I'm a debtor. I owe the Greeks and the barbarians. That is all non-Jewish speaking belief, non-Jewish speaking people. He said, I'm a debtor to them. He said, I'm a debtor to the wise. Who is the wise? The wise are the psychologists, psychiatrists, philosophers, poets. Oh my Lord. Ah, the scientists, the governors, the lawyers, the emperors, everybody who's wrapped up in wisdom that is devoid of Christ. Because Paul understood that no matter what you know, if you don't know Jesus Christ, you still need to be saved. I want to say to the believer, stop being intimidated by the athlete. Stop being intimidated by the movie star. Don't let no one intimidate you because they come from a good family. Don't let anybody frighten you because their educational level may be superior to yours. If they don't know Jesus, they need to be saved. If they don't know Jesus, they need to hear from you more than you need to hear from them. Tell them about the law. Glory. 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 See, some of y'all, you look up to the wrong people. You feel like you're somebody because you are around a movie star or an athlete or a politician or somebody famous. You look up to them, but you look down on the saints. You're twisted. You're twisted. If they don't know Jesus, they need to hear you. And you need to tell them something that doesn't include 
Can I have your autograph? Can I take a selfie with you? Can I take a picture with you? What is that? When you got, you got the kingdom in you. You got, you got Jesus in you. But you want to take a picture with Snoop Dogg. You, 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 you got Jesus in you. But you let athletes. I told him in 8 o'clock class. Have these athletes. You know, uh, they don't move me on public positions and policies and anthems and any of that. I'm old enough to be most of them God's daddy. Right, right, right. If I want to know their opinion, I'll give it to them. They just got here. You know, 23 year old, praise the Lord, just arrived, gonna tell me how I should feel about my country. The devil is a liar. I have too much intelligence for that. You don't like my preaching, do you? Oh, no. Oh, no. Oh, no. Sometimes as believers, we move. Lord, I was on the elevator with Beyonce. Did you witness to her? Because she's on her way to hell. Oh, I saw so-and-so the other day. Did you tell him you were saved? What'd you do? No, I, but I, I want to show you that autograph. D don't. Don't, don't, don't tell me anything like that because you'll get your feelings hurt because my response ain't going to be, wow. No, so it ain't going to be what you expect. I'm going to rebuke you. They should have got yours. You're the carrier of the gospel. You, you have, we're the ones who have this precious faith. And some of these people, it amazed me, not who they won't take a picture with, but who they're willing to take one with. Won't go to the White House, but you can't get them out the club. See, it's amazing to me, when people make a stand, it's, it's, I hear what they say, but it, it amazes me what they allow. See, see, Steph Curry couldn't, couldn't, could not endorse uh, uh, HB2. Couldn't, couldn't, couldn't stand that. And, oh, I, uh, some of the athletes call that a stupid law. And Oh my, it makes our state look backwards. Look backwards. But you can take San Francisco. You can, you can live in, in the Golden Gate City. We, you, you can enjoy Castro Street. Sodom and Gomorrah headquarters number one. You can handle that. But you can't handle a common sense law. Then we, we, we admire them. When the great Reverend Congressman John Lewis, whom I revere and respect, said that there were certain things that he could not away with, that he, he was not all right with, with then candidate Donald Trump, which I think the Congressman was well in his rights. But what got me was what he was all right with. So you're all right with Hillary, who is for abortion on demand. Yes, right. You're you all right with a woman who said that the church got to, got to change its position on homosexuality. See, when you say what you're not all right with, always know people are paying attention to what you are all right with. The saints, y'all don't like my preaching. The saints ought to be all right with the word of God. And that God, that God ought to God everything else that we do. And then when we see each other, we're to encourage each other. Paul says, I'm a debtor to the wise and the unwise. They're just uneducated altogether. Then he says, I'm, I'm done. For as much as in me is, I'm ready to preach the gospel. At Rome also. I'm ready. 
Then he said something that I want to be able to say to the day I die. I don't ever want to shy away from this. And, and this is one of those passages that's true in any context you set it in. You can lift it out. You can put it in. It's like John 3.16. John 3.16 fits anywhere. Amen. Read it in context, out of context. God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son. Ain't no other way to take that. Paul said something I want to be able to say till I die. For I am not ashamed of the gospel of Christ. For it is the power of God unto salvation to every man that believe it. To the Jew first and also the Greek. God let me live. Well, I'll never back off of that statement. Glory to God. Why is the gospel so important? The gospel is the only vehicle on earth. The only one that delivers righteousness by faith. It is the only vehicle that delivers the righteousness of God by faith. The law delivered the righteousness of God by works. Men couldn't live up to it. Islam doesn't deliver the righteousness of God at all. Buddhism, the Jehovah's Witness, no, they don't deliver the righteousness of God. The, the woke movement does not deliver the righteousness of God. Black Lives Matter don't want the righteousness of God. The gospel, some of y'all don't know what to say, do you? Is the only vehicle that delivers the righteousness of God by faith. By faith. By faith. For therein is the righteousness of God in the preaching of the gospel revealed from faith to faith. But it doesn't stop there. And also the wrath of God is revealed in all of those who hold the truth in unrighteousness. I believe. Do you believe? We have mutual faith. I need what's in you. You need what's in me. Let's keep each other going. Hallelujah. Mutual faith. Not all this fighting and rigmarole and competing and clashing but inspiring one another. Wives inspiring their husbands. Husbands inspiring their wives. The preacher inspiring the people. The people inspiring the preacher. Glory to God. You, you being an inspiration on your role. Some of you, some of you I, I would love to get a chance to sit beside you in a service. Some of you I'd rather sit beside a corpse because you never have joy. You, 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 you never get excited. And make, hey Anthony, I want, to, I want to borrow your phrase. Make no mistake about it. That stuff transfers. If you sit beside somebody with some joy, you're going to feel something after a while. By the same token, you're sitting beside someone who has a problem, who's upset. That stuff generates. It you can feel it. You can feel it. And you, you don't even have to know what it is. It may not have, have anything to do with you, but you can sense it. If you're ever in a place like that, move. Because you need need the gospel. We need to pour into each other. I hope you hear me today. We need 
to inspire and encourage one another. As the world grows increasingly dark, as there is increasing media manipulation, I don't know of anybody who would be excited about any kind of policy that may separate a parent from their child. I wouldn't be excited about that in the under any circumstance. Amen. Amen. I just recognize that there are circumstances where that is necessary, though. Yes, sir. Whether, regardless of how you may feel about a thing, sometimes that's the only answer. It happens, uh, it's going to happen this year, at least it's estimated 400 and uh, 4,900 times this year, at least that many times will an African-American mother be locked up and sentenced to prison and every one of them will be separated from their children. I don't see no outcry about that. I don't, I, I don't see nobody down there. Pray, I, that, doesn't, that doesn't seem to bother a soul. That we, sep that we replace the black father with government. With government cheese and a welfare check. And in many cases, the man had to leave because he couldn't get a job and the government wouldn't help him with the man in the house. I didn't see the outcry over that. With nobody on the border. And we are citizens. I told you. I told you. you see, it ain't just, it ain't, it's, not, it's not just what bothers us. Wonder, it's what doesn't. That's what gets me. I, I'm looking. I almost cried the other day. I, I, I like to cry. I like, I, I like to cry. I was looking at the footage of what we call concent, concentration camps, which that language should not be used. That, that's an insult to all who died in the Holocaust. But I was watching the footage and I saw the children who were separated. I saw them playing video games. I saw them on the field playing soccer. I saw them running around and, and, uh, uh, and, and, and in air conditioned surroundings with a clean cot, pencil and pen being provided. Uh, I saw them with counselors and teachers. I saw them and tears came to my eyes. Because I thought about inner city black youth. <laughs> Tears came to my eyes. Because ain't nobody excited about them. And sometimes them boys, they, they, they can't walk the street barefooted because they might step on a, on a syringe. They, they, they have to duck because there is drive-by shootings. And, got to steal because there are no jobs. They know because of high crime, there's no grocery stores in the area. So the old mothers got to walk blocks, 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 blocks to get a bag of grocery. And on her way back, she get robbed, she get robbed, she get robbed. And ain't nobody crying about that. Don't get me started. Then the media creates a fake story. Why do you call it fake? I'm gonna tell you why. I'm gonna tell you why. I'm gonna tell you why. Because of a caveat that they left out. Had they not did this, I, 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 I'd sort of believe them. Mother Turner they left out a caveat. They didn't tell the people that the original pictures that they showed of children held in detention were pictures that was taken in 2014 when President Obama was the president. They didn't have a problem with it then. 
And now it's the worst thing in the world. And people are being whooped up into, whipped up into a frenzy. And people are losing their mind. This is why the saints have got to talk to the saints. The saints have got to keep each other encouraged because there are powerful people who care nothing for us, who care nothing for our faith, who care nothing for our existence. These are manipulators. These are king makers. They know when they get ready, they know how to put one group against another group, make you think whatever they want you to think. And see, this is why every one of us need to be filled with the Holy Ghost. Because when you have the Holy Ghost, you may not know exactly what it is, but you will know something ain't right with this. You will know that's something that don't smell right. It don't pass the smell test. I don't know what it is, but I know that there's something wrong when you have the Holy Ghost. Now, when you don't have the Holy Ghost, you begin to talk the same talking points, say the same stuff, and next thing you know, you out there arguing for a woman's right <laughs> to kill her baby and call that compassion. Help us, Lord. Help us, Lord. I am, I'm a seer. I see things. I, 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 I didn't ask for that gift. It took me a long time, a, a, a while to figure out that I had it because things would start happening. But I had said to myself a few months ago, this is going to happen. It started happening. I saw a pattern. Oh, my. Then I started seeking the Lord. Yes, See, this stuff is designed, all of this. Now, I'm going to tell you something. Just mark it down. All of this is an attack on biblical Christianity. Yes, sir. All of it. All of it. All of it. And then you know we're in trouble when we start hearing people quote the scriptures who we, who we know don't believe in the scriptures and been telling us all the time, leave the Bible out of it. Now, now anytime Planned Parenthood speak against separating parents from their children. That's what you do. You're talking about inhumane separating. Do we need to describe the way you separate parents from their children, Planned Parenthood? Do we need to talk about your bloody, wicked, ungodly, murderous ways of separating parents from their children? And you don't just separate them, Planned Parenthood, for 20 days. In some cases, three hours until paternity can be established. Because kidnappings are up That's exactly right, on the border states because the cartels have told the people that Americans, they're right about this, have good hearts. And when Americans see people with children, Americans' heart go out to it. So on border states, people walking through, there's a child, they find him a baby. Could be yours, and just show up with the child. That's right. Many, many, so you got to do, you don't know him, you can't speak the language, there's no record, they show up. You can't just take them, because you don't know. So until it's established, because some of these people are pedophiles. Some of these, this is drug trafficking. I'm not saying that we're getting everything right. That, that's not my argument. My argument is simply this. As saints of God, my argument is, we got to let God give us discernment. We, we, we got to be careful what we're willing to believe and excuse and what we get worked up over. Worked up over. Sometimes, more often than not, you can determine whether or not an argument, whether or not you should join in on an argument based on who's making it. Now, if you got LBGT, Planned Parenthood, all, uh, 
uh, all them on one side. Here's what you all, before you even know what it's all about, walk, walk to the other side. Just chance, because chances are, chances are the other side is right. Before you even hit an argument, let, let, let me get over here. I want to make a social statement without making a political one. And then I'm going to pray. Because we need each other. And we need people who are willing to say what I just said to you. Yes, sir. Amen. 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 And you know what else? I need people who are willing to respond the way you just responded. But as a people, what is today's day? 24. 6, 24, 18. As a people, African Americans, my people, those of us who are darker than blue, those of us who are of the darker hue. Yeah. On this day, I declare to you that if we don't change, we will rule the day. We will mourn the day. We will weep over our seeming love affair with white leftists and progressives. Patrick Wooden. Remember my prophecy. I didn't say white people. I said leftists and progressives. For these people promote policies that are killing us, that cripple us, that make us lazy, that cause us to kill our own and make us feel good about it, that's making our men feminine and our girls butch and caught up in all of this is the church of Jesus Christ, caught up in this Roman empire there's the church at Rome. Now, let us make peace and exalt each other through this mutual.